Hi everyone, this is Serene. Welcome to today's episode. And today I have a very interesting guest, a good friend of mine, Eric. So Eric has a very, very extraordinary career path um, from a chef to a Web3 marketer, which is in the beginning, I was like, how does two become one career path with one person, right? I will start to ask Eric to introduce himself. Hey, uh, my name's Eric. Um, I've been a chef in New York for almost 20 years. And mid-COVID, I, I started to make a transition from cooking to Web3, um, and which sounds like a, a crazy transition, but actually made a lot of sense. The, the skills that I learned running a business and building teams have really transitioned to, to the new career well. Awesome. So I know that Eric has studied economics as major and also minor in psychology and literature. That's very interesting of a major choice. Like what makes you to make this such a choice? So back in college, I wasn't focused on classwork as much as I was focused on, on learning how to learn and learning how to build businesses even at that time. I opened my mm -hmm. first business I opened my first food business and worked for a, a fledgling, you know, cell phone company that was just getting started and, and was really looking for opportunities to, to work and to, to learn how to build business. And the economic side made sense because one, that's where the business school and the business classes were housed, but mm -hmm. also just understanding the way that, that money works and the way that demand and supply and, and, and all of that basic um, philosophy of, of need makes sense, you know, in, in building a business. So I, I focused there um, and really learned a lot to, to gain how to think about the, the foundationally, you know, uh, how to build a business. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then on the psychology and, and the, the literature side, you know, the literature was there. I felt it was very important to learn to, to read and write and, and not just, you know, read and write at a basic level, but be able to really read at depth and fast and, and understand what people were trying to communicate and be able to write the things that I wanted to be able to communicate and, and figure mm -hmm. those skills out. And on a psychology side, you know, thinking about the way people think and the what what affects people's brains. And, and I found it fascinating. And, and I looked at it collectively as, you know, this these are the skill sets and the thinking that I'm gonna need to help me build businesses in the future. Actually, um, economics is one of the most popular major, like all time. So mm -hmm. what are some great things about this major? I know you, you mentioned that it makes sense, it connects you with business, um, but, like throughout the years, do you think economics really helps you uh, with all your career decisions? Um, you're going to put me on a spot here. I was I was a poor student, so you know I the the actual economic theory and the economic. So I'll put it this way: the the theory and the the conceptual side mm -hmm. completely makes sense and completely carried through. The, the math side of the economics, I've never really applied in a way that, that changed my work. Um, mm -hmm. But thinking about, you know, basic supply demand, what needs to be out there? What are opportunities? How do people think about, you know, need and what they want? And, and you know, a lot of game theory is something that I've thought about in, in interesting ways, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify myself as an economist by any means. I see. So how did you transfer, like shift from chef to the Web3 uh, field? Is your first job a chef? So right out of college, I decided that I needed a real job, quote unquote. And um, I got a, a job working in a life insurance company and I hated every minute of it but I learned sales and, and they mm -hmm. really taught us how to think about sales in a structured way. And, and it was really very valuable to the rest of my career. Mm -hmm. um, 
very quickly, I, I decided this isn't what I want to be doing. And I knew that I loved cooking and I wanted to make a career out of it and, and jumped in and, and, and went back to school and went to culinary school and excelled there, um, thinking that I'd be working in restaurants and instead very quickly started building a client base of catering and which grew into multiple businesses and a, and a, and a long successful career there. Um, the transition started back in 2016. Um, I had a customer who used to have lunch in my restaurant who was an economics professor and we'd sit and have lunch and chat and, and talk regularly. And one day he said, hey, do you know about this Bitcoin thing? Mm -hmm. um, and I had no idea. And he spent a few hours teaching me about it. And I found it fascinating. Um, and he offered to open up, I had a new restaurant and he offered to open up a tab in the restaurant paying with Bitcoin. Um, and I said, let me think about it. And I went back to him and unfortunately said, I, I, it sounds fascinating, but I can't pay rent with Monopoly money. Um, mm -hmm. And I missed a big opportunity. But it's, it, it, what he did was set me up to be listening and thinking about it and reading about it going forward. And you know, in the years since, you know, he's, he's laughed at me a little bit, but, you know, I, I needed to pay rent. It was a new restaurant. So I would never have held that Bitcoin. I would have sold it and, and paid rent with it. But I paid attention to what was happening from then forward. And, you know, was never, I'm not an investor in, in that sense and was never going to be speculating on these assets, but was always reading about it and thinking about what are the use cases when will someone like me be using this in their day-to-day -day lives? When will somebody like my father be using this in their day-to-day -day lives? And Bitcoin turned into thinking about Ethereum and smart contracts. And that's when things really started to click in my mind of like, there's something happening here. This is the new foundation for, for a world computer, for the internet of the future. And, and I really started paying attention, still wasn't speculating, but was paying attention um, and as COVID hit, you know, my world in restaurants and catering weddings changed drastically. Mm -hmm. And we immediately, as COVID hit, fed almost 100,000 people and raised some money to feed the community. And then, you know, the, the real food banks came in and, and took over that work. And, and I was left kind of at home for the first time, not cooking and dove into Web3. It was just a fun, interesting thing that, that reminded me of my first job of, of selling cell phones and introducing people to AOL in the, in the mid 90s. And mm -hmm. I, I just felt this tidal wave and, and, and jumped in, but always thinking about what my skill set was, is, is what, are the, what are the use cases? When will people want to be using this and how will they be using this and not speculating on it? And I think that's the next tidal wave that's coming. And that's what I've really paid attention to. I love that story. And it's somehow so interesting. It went back to economics, right? It's the economic professor giving you that spark moment, <laughs> that moment that inspired you to think. And I, I also love that. Sounds like it's, it's never about just good luck. Sounds like you had a really good career in culinary and, and as a chef, a uh, catering business. Uh, all, right now, you have a really great business in Web3, but it's always, when, when we hear your story, it's always about when you see the opportunity, it's not, you have an open mind and also you analyze, uh, do your research and you use your analytic skill and to find your way in that new area. I, I really like that. And I also think that's our um, the goal of our podcast to maybe give some inspiration for people who are doing career exploration. Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. feel like you never know what's coming next. You know, if you had asked me in 2016, would I be working in Web3? My answer would have been no, but I found it fascinating. So I read about it and researched it. And I, and I think that's part of the key is like you said, open mind and, and paying attention to the things that, that interest, interested me and, you know, or, mm -hmm. and, and just leaning into that because opportunities everywhere. You, you kind of have to make your own luck and, and be ready for it is, is kind of how I look at things. 
Yeah, so uh, right now we're in Web3 and in this industry is quite new and a lot of people have so many questions about it and there's some people refuse to even try to understand it. So any suggestions for people who want to enter this industry? So, you know, we talked about speculating a, a minute ago and I think that's the important piece is, is that getting into Web3 in the speculation gambling, I'm gonna buy something and hope the value goes up is a very scary world. And mm -hmm. totally. you know, it, that's and I think that's what turns a lot of people off. If it was talked about as this is the future of the internet, you know, everything's getting more digital, it's not gonna go the other way. Mm -hmm. The you know, the introduction of internet 20 years ago allowed people to connect all around the world in a better way than ever before. And what Web3 does is it allows people to organize groups in, in a better way than ever before. And in that light, you know, there, we're not talking about gamble, gambling or speculating. We're talking about connecting people and organizing people and building. And in that case, you know, it's very easy to, to lean in and use a new technology to, to organize groups of people that are dispersed around the world. And I think that's the way people need to think about it is, you know, not how can I get rich quick, but how can I think about new technology in my life and how will it affect others in, in my world and, and build into that or find a niche in that space because that's really what's coming. You know, the, the speculation on dog pictures or on tokens has nothing to do with what Web3 mm -hmm. really is in the long run. That's awesome. That's very insightful. And I, so we will definitely continue the, a conversation in the future more about Web3 because personally, I have a lot of things that I want to learn in this field. Um, and so for anyone who is watching this episode, if you really like what are we sharing, please subscribe and follow us and hit the like button. And thank you so much, Eric, for being on our show and share your personal journey of your career path and your insightful ideas of your career right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Okay. Bye, everyone.